With more reaction to this story, though, now we're joined by Jody Wilson-Raybould's father, Bill Wilson. Mr. Wilson is a Muscama hereditary chief. He joins us from our studios in Vancouver. Hi, Chief Wilson. Thanks for being with us. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. What was your reaction uh, to your daughter's resignation? Well, disappointment, obviously, but uh, not uh, surprised. Uh, I happened to be in the, my eye surgeon's office when my wife gave me the news over the phone. That was how I heard it, That's what, which would explain my eye today. But I was not surprised. In fact, uh, when uh, Jody was kicked in the teeth by the prime minister and shuffled down to Veterans Affairs, as important as it is, you know, that was a clear slap in the face for all Indians across the country. Uh, she was demoted to this, I think, the only thing lower than Indian, or lower than uh, Veterans Affairs is Indian Affairs. And so uh, for all Indians across the country, that was uh, a, a real slight. And I, I had sort of expected her to resign at that because I'm a bit more pig-headed than she is, obviously. Uh, I would have resigned and uh, immediately, and I wouldn't have taken uh, as important a portfolio as defense and veterans affairs is as some way to keep quiet, which seems to me what the prime minister tried to do to a woman that has integrity and won't listen to that kind of stuff. Our last guest uh, sort of speculated that, that it wasn't just the events of the past week concerning SNC-Lavalin that prompted the resignation, but in fact that that demotion to a different portfolio and, and what it symbolized to Indigenous people across the country. Well, Would you it, agree with that assessment? Yes, it wasn't only that. It was also the fact that uh, she had enforced speeches, very brief comments, criticizing the so-called reconciliation farce. You know, uh, this Trudeau's government, just like the last Trudeau's government hasn't done anything but dig deeper holes for the poverty and deprivation of Aboriginal people across the country. They dance around the table and pretend they can give some money to Indian organizations here, there, and everywhere that don't change things in the communities. The reality is that 68% of all the Indian reserves in this country still don't have potable water, can't drink their water. Some of them don't have electricity. Our health standards have gone down. Our educational standards have improved somewhat, but the reality is that Indian people are still treated like dirt in a land that once belonged to them. You walk into a store in any city in this country, and if you're a native Indian, you're followed because of the inher inherent racism. Things have gotten worse. In the 62 years that I've been involved in upfront Indian politics, and it certainly wasn't my fault, it was successive governments, conservative and liberal, and even NDP in this province, that have dug the hole deeper of poverty and marginalization for Aboriginal people. I, it's disgusting, and I don't know why the country doesn't re respond. And this make-believe cosmetic baloney that uh, Trudeau's engaged in has proven itself now to be a farce. I, I understand 100% what you're saying, and, and you would know much better than me. I guess the government would point to some of the investments they've made for example, in uh, in education um, uh, for First Nations, uh, as well in for Indigenous, I'm sorry, as well as uh, conducting the missing and murdered Indigenous women's inquiry, uh, in introducing Indigenous languages legislation. What would your response be uh, to, to that point? If it wasn't so sad, I would laugh at them because the reality is they never did any of those initiatives by themselves. They were forced to it. The women's inquiry was forced upon them by women active women across this country, supported by men and other people, including the Canadian public, to see if we could get rid of the fact that women are treated as dirt by the Western civilization. And for them to take any credit for education is a farce. The reality is the educational advancements came from Aboriginal people doing things for themselves on their own. The government has done absolutely nothing, and the, and the farce of the whites portfolio given to Carol Bennett is dead in the water. It has done nothing but fuel the, the misery industry of lawyers and consultants and facilitators and other people who live off the backs of our suffering. It's a shame. Canada should be ashamed. Uh, Ms. Wilson-Raybould, your daughter, uh, has announced today that she resigned from Cabinet, but she, she hasn't uh, made public whether or not she'll remain in caucus. Do you think she should? I certainly think she should. She's been elected by the people in her riding of Grandel. Uh, she has a responsibility to them. I hope she runs again and gets a larger majority. 
who knows where this scandal is going to end up. I mean, there could be a change in government, but I hope it's not tweedly dee and tweedly dumb because we know how bad the Conservatives were. The Liberals were slightly better than the Conservatives, but both governments have historically treated Indian people like cannon fodder, treated them in the misery industry to make sure that they could be pushed off the land and the resources to build pipelines and, and pollute rivers. Nothing's going to change unless Indian people do it at their own level, organize themselves to fight at the community level. I have no faith whatsoever, not that I ever did, in the white man's government. Have you spoken to your daughter since this story broke last week? I would like to, but it seems that you people are occupying her time. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Chief Wilson. Really appreciate your time today. You're welcome.